but I'm just bad. And this is the Battlefield 3 gameplay. This is a commentary over it. That would make this a Battlefield 3 gameplay commentary. I haven't done one of these in a little while. I'm sorry for that. You know, every once in a while life just comes up. And I, I have to make videos on games I play, and I don't always play Battlefield 3. Uh, until recently, I took, like I said, I took that month off of it. Then I played it for a little bit, stopped again. I played it for a lot. <laughs> once this uh, premium stuff came out, it was new content, new unlocks, and all that lovely stuff. And one of the new uh, content pieces is the M417. Now, uh, it is unlocked by getting 20... What is it? 20 flag captures and 20 tugs, spot assists, and it is done by completing the uh, the assignment is t called team player, I believe. So you have to play conquest for capture at least 20 points. It's actually depending on t the size of server you play on. If you're on a giant ticket count, that probably can do that in one game. Uh, if you're on a normal ticket, it took me about four games. No, more than that. It's probably closer to five games. Uh, I like capturing flags, and it counts. Uh, you, all, all the flag captures that you do count. You don't have to be using the recon kit for those to count. You can use vehicles, you can do assault, you can do it whatever your favorite uh, kit is. Those captures will count towards those 20 flag caps, but obviously you need to use the, tu the recon kit to get the tugs. Sit, the tugs assists. It's a fun gun to use. Uh, it fires, I believe, the same 308 round that the MK11 has, and the way Battlefield 3 does their damage system, uh, if the fire is the same caliber ammunition, it does the same damage. And I believe that is the case. This gun seems to me like it does the same damage as the MK11. However, it has 20 rounds, the MK11 has 11, or pardon me, 21 versus the MK11. 11. Uh, and it is... Uh, if I had to describe it, I would say it's a cross between the MK11 and the SKS. Uh, it does more damage than the SKS. You can kill in two shots, three at long range. The SKS, I believe, is a four and five hit kill. Maybe even be a three and five. I'm not entirely sure. I use it a lot, but I really don't pay too much attention to how much shots it takes to kill somebody, as long as I get the kill. Then, I, otherwise, I blame lag and all that stuff. You know, all the excuses that people use. <laughs> Uh, but it does more damage than the SKS. It has a, fa a controllable fire rate very similar to that of the SKS. Now, the recoil does jump around pretty sharply, but if you put the right attachments on there, like a foregrip and possibly a flash suppressor once I unlock it, it would definitely uh, help with the recoil. It has great hip fire spread, especially with equipped the laser sight. And it, overall, it combines pretty much the best elements of the SKS and the MK11. That's the best way to describe it. Uh, if you could imagine an MK11 with a 21 round magazine capacity and the damage, or, or pardon me, the rate of fire very similar to that of the SKS. Uh, it does kick quite a bit at long range, but then again it should because you're firing quickly. You really just have to get used to the, the fire rate and the tempo, much like all the battle rifles. It's all about tempo firing and allowing that recoil to center back before you put the next shot on target if you absolutely have to uh, be precise, if not. The suppression effect is amazing, so you can just spam and within two or three shots of spammed rounds, your target will be fully suppressed. And then you can afford to take your time a little bit on the next couple shots because they're not going to be able to aim unless they have you suppressed as well, then you won't be able to aim. In which case, I would just say recommend hip firing and praying, because you'll see, I think it's got some parts in this video, I believe, I don't know if I put them in or if that was a different game, but I get suppressed, I'm trying to ADS, and the recoil just goes straight upwards, <laughs> and I shoot over my target. But, if I hip fired, I probably would have at least gotten a couple of shots uh, better accuracy. I, I, I stopped mid-sentence there, and I couldn't catch up. <laughs> Uh, but play styles for this weapon, because it's a cross between the MK11 and the SKS, in my opinion. The play style allows you for great flexibility. You can throw on... I, I use basically two setups with this gun, depending on the map I'm playing on, and the game mode I'm playing on. 
and the way my teammates are doing. If my teammates require me to be a little more aggressive, I slap on this setup I'm using now, which is the red dot sight, or a hollow sight, or a low zoom sight, what, any, what, any of the holographic sights, or red dot sight, whichever ones you prefer. A low zoom magnification, the laser sight to control the horizontal recoil, well, the grip to control the horizontal recoil, and the laser sight to control the hip fire. This is just going crazy. I can't tell if you can hear it. My air conditioner is running over there in the corner. And I'm gonna have to try to do some background cleaning up on the audio, but I cannot do this with that off. It has been really humid today, and this time of night, it may not be very warm outside, but it's like extremely humid, and I can't stand humidity, so I'm gonna try to see how this turns out with that being on. So if it is a little, little weirder audio than normal, I apologize, and I'll make a change accordingly the next time around. But as I was saying, if I need to be more aggressive with this gun, I use more of an SKS style setup. In other words, uh, flash suppressor or laser sight with a low magnification scope, as in zero magnification, and a foregrip to control the horizontal recoil, which is present. It's not that's not massive, you know, but there is definitely some there. Now, if I want, if I'm playing on a bigger map. Or I'm allowed, my teammates are allowing me to be a little more cautious in my playstyle, a little more of a true marksman playstyle. In other words, the dreaded bush wookie. Uh, I prefer the bipod and the 8x rifle scope. Now, the 8x rifle scope does make the magnification quite significant, and it'll, it's definitely a big difference over the zero magnification hollow sight, and it makes the recoil. The stand out much more because I mean you can see how it's jumping around now but imagine that at 8x that's why I use the, the bipod if I can throw the bipod down it removes almost all of the bounce from the uh, the rifle scope and it really does turn it into a bit of a laser so and now that they've changed the bipod so that it deploys faster and it uh, deploys more reliably, you pick, pick it up faster and deploy it faster. It makes a great option. I would not use this for any sort of long range engagements. It, how, the ACOG site is a great alternative to 8x if you're trying to do more of a mid range. I would definitely recommend the bipod though for that and use basically the same type of play style except you have a lower zoom on your gun. And the reason why I say the ACOG, because like I said, it, it bounces less because versus the 8x rifle scope. And also what I found is that when I'm running a rifle scope, an 8x or 12x on a semi-automatic rifle, I tend to find myself using it more like a bolt-action rifle. In other words, here's some spamming fail. Uh, I tend to use it more as a bolt-action rifle. I tend to be a little more cautious, sit back a little farther than it's a little farther than is appropriate for the rifle I'm using and I end up and I enter into the world of the bolt action rifle and unless I'm really lucky and the guy I'm shooting at is not very good try to take a DMR into the bolt action rifle world you're gonna get killed quite often and it's gonna be very frustrating so I just tend to avoid those especially the 12x the 8x Especially on the bigger Carcan maps like Oman and uh, Carcan. Wake Island, I prefer these bolt actions on Wake Island. But the bigger semi urban maps, the rifle scope does work really well on, and definitely try it out. But if you're going to use the rifle scope, use the bipod and put it down everywhere you can, much like you were trying to bipod up a light machine gun or a bolt action rifle. Those are the two different styles of kit setups that I use for this gun. And you can feel free to obviously come up and create your own, but if you like the semi-automatic sniper rifles, or the designated marksman rifles, as I guess they're technically called, because uh, they're not my, uh, you know, it's a term, but I don't believe, uh, what's the term? Semi-automatic sniper system, the SASS, I guess is the military slang for it. So, if you like using the SASS rifles, <laughs> the semi-automatic sniper system rifles, Designated marksmen, semi-auto snipers, whatever you want to call them, you will love this gun. It's going to be a very aggressive option. For if 
the aggressive players out there, this gun will do you wonders. If you're a little more cautious, it still has the downrange damage of the MK11. So if you can use the MK11, you can use this gun. And if you always want to be a little more aggressive with the MK11, this gun is a great choice for that because of the SKS type of uh, shooting properties that it does offer. So there's a little overview, some setups I use, some tactics I use with this. One of my favorites and probably most of the semi-automatic gameplay that I will upload will be with this gun because it is, in my opinion, the best overall semi-automatic sniper system in Battlefield 3 as of right now. I'm sure they'll nerf this thing because, people, believe me, people will start crying about this once it becomes more popular out there in the battlefield. Because it is the SKS's bigger, angrier, more steroid-filled brother. And people got the SKS nerfed and then rebuffed and then I think they're they did nerfed it again in the last patch, I think. So... That fade is coming to this gun, I can guarantee it. So before that, get used to it, have some fun with it, because of all the guns that I think they're going to change, this is definitely one that's going to be addressed. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know it's Team Deathmatch gameplay. You guys don't really like Team Deathmatch. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe you do. I, I prefer playing Conquest and Rush 2, but for Team Deathmatch, uh, for unlocking attachments, nothing beats Team Deathmatch. Because you get so many kills all the time, you just don't get that in Conquest or Rush. But the game is pretty much coming down to an end, so I think I'm just going to let the music play it out. I, uh, I've said my piece on this gun, you'll probably see it more. Definitely use it if you haven't. Uh, of all the, the weapons from close quarters that you can unlock, I personally would recommend going for this one first. I think it's going to give you the most, the most versatility, especially if you're the kind of person that wants to be aggressive with the recon kit. So until next time, happy fragging.